السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم لسنرز ٹو دا ٹوکنگ دین پوڈ کاسٹ بوٹ یو بائی دا وائس آف دا امہ ٹیم مائی نیم از ماجد ام اے کو ہوسٹ ٹو ڈے اور بردر راش اینڈ بردر جے کے بردر ہائی فیل اباؤٹ دا فرسٹ پوڈ کاسٹ الحمد للہ یا لکنگ فارورڈ ٹو ایٹ شو بی گڈ بٹ یا آئی تھنک اٹس واز سم تھنگ آئی لسن ٹو ریگولرلی سو لکنگ فارورڈ الحمد للہ آئی تھنک اٹس اٹس پک اٹس پکنگ اپ ا لاٹ آف پیپل ان دس گڈ میڈیم یا الحمد للہ Okay, inshallah, without further ado, let's introduce the topic of discussion. So today's topic, um, we're going to cover the aftermath of the Christchurch terrorist attack. It's good to use the word terrorist. Uh, and also link it to the issue of Islamophobia. Um, so I've got a few questions just to give some sort of uh, structure to the, the conversation, even though really it's just some brothers together having a discussion, talking about the deen. Uh, but the first question, just to Brother JK, is does the Christchurch attack highlight the rise of Islamophobia? What do you think about this? So, Jazakallah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, I think before answering that question, I think before we should recognize that uh, it's been a couple of weeks since the, since the attack and um, we can have time to reflect on it. Uh, the emotion has gone down a little bit. People are kind of actually, to be honest, people are getting on with their lives. Um, and yeah. many, you could even argue, many have not forgotten, but this doesn't, it's not a daily thought in their head that may, they may have forgotten about the incident. True. Um, so that's the first thing to highlight. And the other thing, we, today I think we'll talk a bit of, about the, the plans of, of the West and plans of the enemies of Allah, what they want to do um, with Islam and the, the plans for Islam itself. And I think what we need to highlight is that every kind of plan that's hatched against the Muslims and the Ummah, mm-hmm. The reality is that the Muslims pay the price. It's Muslim blood that is spilled. So this isn't about any blame on the victims of this attack or even any other terrorist attack that's happened against the Muslims in, in, around the world. Uh, the reality is they are the victims in this and they, they pay the price with their yeah. blood. So, so your question about Islamophobia and whether this incident highlights the rise of Islamophobia, um, I, I have a different take on this, to be honest. I think... Uh, the word Islamophobia or the term Islamophobia um, shouldn't really be used by Muslims. It's, it's not, um, doesn't really help the discussion, doesn't really highlight what the true issue is. Okay. Um, and a couple of reasons I have. So, um, I think the first point is that Islamophobia really localizes the issue. It makes the issue about um, Muslims living in the West and the attacks and the harm and the kind of rhetoric against Muslims living in the West. And what this does is um, splits our thought process on just thinking about Muslims here without thinking about the Muslims in the wider Ummah. Okay. To give you an example of this, um, you will never find that when an attack happens in the Muslim world, in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, wherever it may be, mm. they will never refer to the term Islamophobia. Mm. And that's deliberate because they don't see that as Islamophobia. So True. as a Muslim and as an Ummah, we need to know that we're one Ummah and pain anywhere around the world that's suffered by Muslims is the same. Well, it's, it's difficult to take and it's a very dire state of affairs. However, it's not Islamophobia, it's a campaign against Islam. And the, the second point I think uh, we need to really highlight is that by talking about Islamophobia, what you do is you, you take all the blame and you place it on the lone soldiers of the like, far right uh, nationalists or okay. these extreme uh, members of the far right. Um, and it's all about they become the enemy. So when they become the enemy, our vision and our sight is just on them. And what it does, it absolves entire governments mm. who are leading a bigger campaign, more dangerous campaign against the Muslims, it absolves them of all, all the blame. I think these are a couple of reasons why we shouldn't refer to the framework of Islamophobia and we should think more of it about the war or the campaign against Islam itself. Okay, okay. Have you any thoughts on this, Rush? Really, JK has covered most of what I was thinking myself, but... I suppose what we could add to it is the fact that sometimes we, we, are, we, we have suffered, our hearts are softened when we see like non-Muslims show solidarity and you know they're coming to our mosques, there's people online sharing things, there's some positive messages. So what happens is 
we can quite easily conflate the reaction from the typical person on the street, our neighbour, and we think, okay, well, now they've seen some aspects of Islam because it might be on the TV. Yeah. Um, they're, they're kind of warm to it. Whereas the leaders themselves, some of their actions usually has an agenda behind it. Mm. So you, we do need to question this sometimes. So just to add there, I think we need to really clarify the fact that a lot of people, the type of hate they have for Islam has been built because of the media, mm. because of an incorrect view of Islam that has been painted to them. And then when you paint the right image of Islam to them, they might actually sit back and think, actually, it's not this barbaric religion that the media is telling about us about. So there has been some elements of it for the local people, which is positive. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what happens is when we think of this and make this our only cause, it's very easy to then go, oh, OK, let's forget about the actual war on Islam that is taking place. So I think as Muslims, we need to make sure we're not completely consumed by the local side of this issue. And as you said, the Islam calling it Islamophobia and also add it in with the global global campaign that's happening as well. That is really interesting because um, if these attacks, just say, were not happening in the West, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of the reaction uh, that we saw, because we have to understand is during the same period, uh, Muslims were being killed in Syria, in Baghouz, yeah. uh, and all in over Mali. the place, right? in Mali. Yeah. Yeah. But the coverage obviously was, was more for this, and, and, and maybe so because from a Muslim point of view, um, this was something that happened supposedly in the West. Yeah. Um, and also the fact that the same mentality, the, the people had the mentality that if somebody could walk into uh, a mosque in New Zealand, then why can't somebody walk into my local mosque? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and hence why people, you know, became you know, semi-activists and, and, and uh, uh, calling for changes in laws, in, in mm -hmm. social media, etc., etc. But then the reality is, is that imagine if these attacks were not happening. Uh, yeah. And people never felt that direct uh, fear. Yet, when the when what we see in Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, yeah. you know, the list continues: Kashmir, Gujarat. Yeah. If, when these don't affect you, then I can see what you're saying that the Islamophobia card is actually quite tricky because yeah. it gets you involved with something that directly affects you, yeah. uh, and even they will uh, show that they are against Islamophobia. Yeah. But then at the same time, the war on Islam, that's going on, yet it's some, they've somehow disconnected and conditioned many Muslims to think that you know Islamophobia is the main thing, yet what's happening in those lands is secondary because it's not directly affecting them and it's not happening in their lands. Yeah, and that's the main thing, I think. That's the main thing. And it's easy to fall into that trap because yeah. you can relate it's easy to relate when you watch that video. And I think this is why, to an extent, some incidents get forgotten in a couple of weeks or a week. I think this incident, I think, actually hasn't been forgotten by a lot of Muslims and a lot yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. I think it will continue. So I don't completely think it has been forgotten in people's mind. But I think that's because of the way it was carried out. The, yeah. the live video, that being, you know, millions if millions of people mm -hmm. have actually seen it. Yeah. So I think that sentiment has kept this alive but yep. equally it's very dangerous for us to just concentrate on this localized element or this one incident without linking it to what else is going on in the world yeah and just to, just to add to that i think yeah absolutely um many muslims wouldn't have forgot because it was a horrific incident mm. um, and i think the main reason many won't forget is that they can relate it to themselves they can you can really look at that video and think that could be my local that mosque be your local yeah, mosque. that's gonna yeah. be my that could yeah. easily be my local mosque um, or a member of your own family. Yeah, your yeah. own family or your own community. But I think this argument that the reason it was highlighted more because it was live streamed and it was horrific images. Yes, to an extent true. Mm. However, when it's come to Guantanamo Bay, Bagram, mm. when it's come to the torture, uh, Abu, to Kashmir, Abu Ghraib, Abu Ghraib yeah. all of these were images, you know, yeah. just in the same level as well. Mm. And not carried out by just lone soldiers, carried out by governments. And so if you take that as an angle, you have to also say that some of these atrocities that have happened at the hands of Western secular governments yeah. have been leaked as well uh, and been, you know, very, uh, you know, images that are very kind of crude and, and horrific. Yeah, so yeah. So that percent. in itself, I don't think can be used as a reason to say, oh, this is why it's got more, it's been highlighted more, yeah. um, because actually 
in many other atrocities have happened where it's been quite graphic images or videos that have come out. So why do you think why do you think that the this was given more attention than just say other things that have happened? Yeah. Is I'm, it just because of the way it was uh, the way it was carried out? I mean because yeah. you know if something happened and there wasn't much coverage mm. it's easy to just say brush it under the carpet. Yeah. But the way this was carried out in such a way yeah. it, it's it's almost impossible for the governments to not address it mm. and address it in a very harsh way yeah, yeah. because of just the way it happened. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a, it's a good question. Why was it given more media because it, it, it did. It, it did, yeah. absolutely. It did. Um, I think t- two reasons. One reason, as we've said, because it was live stream and graphic, and, graphic, graphic, graphic yeah. and um, you know, you could see every detail. And it's one of them videos that you can't, can't unsee. Yeah, subhanAllah. You know, subhanAllah. Like, it's really difficult. And those who haven't seen it, I'll advise... Don't watch it. Like it's yeah, one of the, you of don't course. want to watch your brothers and sisters yeah, being brutally, you know, massacred like that. That's one reason. The, the other reason we have to say is that it was because it was carried out in the West, because it occurred here, like in Western lands. And the reality is that, and this is sad to say, but the life of a Westerner is greater in the court of kind of the world media yeah. is greater than the life of someone living in the villages of Afghanistan, for example. And I think this, with it being this reality, uh, many people die, as you said. Many people, even during this time period, yeah, have yeah. been yeah. being killed, yeah. uh, whether it be Yemen, Syria, Palestine, lots of things going on, Mali. Um, they, they are murdered and massacred in these lands, um, but they won't have the same coverage on the media. It might be mentioned, but as a number, as a stat. Um, and I think the, the reality is that that's probably why they've highlighted it. However, I think there's something broader happening here. I think um, uh, there's some objectives behind making this uh, like all over the pages of the newspapers and all over the media. Um, and, and I think that is because they want to promote this idea of humanity and how we can all come together against a common enemy. And who is that common enemy? Those who um, are Islamophobic, as we've took that term, Islamophobic, and those who are kind of far right, and you know are really extreme in that sense mm. and what that does is it it puts all the muslims as well as non-muslims on one side mm-hmm. and the extremists on another side and the danger with that although we disagree with the far right extremists that mm. hate islam mm. absolutely we disagree um the other point is that but even those who are more left-leaning have the same idea they may not be as crude and uh you know blunt in terms of their hatred for Islam as a political ideology or mm-hmm. the whole of Islam, but they have the same feeling. They want secularism, they want capitalism to prosper. And but, any other. But what you said there, wouldn't you say that, in fact, uh, what the way I see it is what this has shown is that what you have is on both sides, you have extremists. Yeah. On both sides. Yeah, absolutely. So you have the far right, yeah. but then within the Muslims, you have the so called people. Who are they? They, they term as terrorists yeah. and uh, and uh, extremists, um, and this is like showing that in fact we're the normal people, the common people. We can come together, and it's our responsibility Absolutely. to root out the extremism within our own communities. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the thing is, when it comes to the far right, we know what I, what ideas that they 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 yeah. carry, but when it comes down to the Muslims. What do they mean by extremists? Absolutely. Rush, I mean, any ideas? No, it's absolutely that. They've already started to talk about you know, clamping down on these type of ideas on social media. So what, when they talk about ext- Muslim extremists, they're talking about Muslims equally who want a certain way of life, who want the comprehensive implementation of the Sharia. So they will then link those with the far right. So that means that they can easily, and this is why the manifesto is quite important as well. Mm. So his manifesto allowed them to go, these are the ideas that we're not going to tolerate. This is the idea of having um, kind of nationalism based on based on white supremacy. And therefore, we're against that, these fundamental ideas. But also the Islamic extremists, they also hold these ideas that their way of life should prevail, yeah. their way of life yeah. need to be implemented. And as soon as they do that, 
and link the two together, it's a lot easier for them to say that even Muslims will agree with them to say, okay, stop white supremacy being promoted online. All of a sudden, the Muslim won't realise, or some Muslims are not realising, mm. that as soon as that is allowed to be prevented, also promoting Islamic unity, promoting the Sharia of Allah being implemented, mm. also becomes banned yeah. or made difficult. So well, we have to be no, careful. J- just a quick point is that also if you think about it, a lot of the things that these far right or these racist people will say, yeah. they're, 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 what, what they're against are the ideas which are what you would probably say that they label the extremists with, i.e. Yeah. from the Islamic side, mm-hmm. that they want Islam to be superior, yeah. they want to implement Islam, yeah. they want the Sharia, etc., unity. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at a lot of the far right and, and the people who are against Islam, mm. Uh, they also against this. So in a way, what this shows is that, okay, you know, there's a problem that you have within your Muslim communities Mm -hmm. and that's why there's people that are against it because they're saying you're not integrating because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah, Yeah. it puts the onus on the Muslim community to To address address it. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And just just to add to that point quickly is that when you look at um, government policy, and the prevent scheme, whether it be CVE, which is more wider global. in the US global campaign to counter violent extremism. When you look at these uh, policies and when they define extremism, they're very clear on what they say. They talk about non-violent extremism as well, right? And when they've spoken about, so Contest 2, which is part of the prevent um, 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 under umbrella, umbrella, umbrella yeah. Um, yeah. they speak about those who are extreme are the ones who uh, believe in a pan-Islamic state. So those who believe yeah. in a caliphate, those who um, call for the Sharia of Allah to be implemented, the laws of Allah to be implemented, those who do not, cond- you know, those who are against the uh, British army, right? So even though the British army are killing our brothers, brothers and sisters in Ummah, yeah. if we're against this, we're unbreaded, we're in the uh, defined extreme, 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 right? Yeah. And finally, those who are against homophobia or uh, homosexuality, yeah. uh, you know, those who are against homosexuality are count- counted as amongst the extremists. Yes. So again, these are. All of these things I've said, these are this isn't extreme in the sense of ISIS. This is the common Muslim holds these views. So what does thoughts. that mean? It means that it's pushing us down a certain route of kind of leaving these thoughts and ideas and embracing the values of secularism and, and, and capitalism. Yeah. Well, just to uh, just to sort of like uh, highlight what you're saying, uh, there was a recent interview. Um, a discussion between uh, Piers Morgan and uh, Did you say you might have seen yeah. and what I found uh, very interesting was the fact that when um, Piers Morgan was uh, asked whether Did you agrees with homosexuality yeah. and he said no it's a sin mm-hmm. um, so, and then what what they try to do actually not just Piers Morgan the whole panel mm. what they try to do is they try to show that Islam inherently is homophobic. Mm. And what they were saying is that in every single mosque in the in the country, homophobic homophobia is being taught, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so right. which means now it's coming to a stage where there's things which are part of Islam, that now what they are saying is, listen, this is just not acceptable. Mm-hmm. This goes against our values, and this is not acceptable. So now the question is, the pressure that's going to be on isn't just about, uh, you know, taking out these extremists. Who, who want Sharia law and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now the pressure is that fundamental things which are clear cut in the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. Now we are being told that these are unacceptable, these are intolerant, and that for us to be part of this liberal tolerant society, this is something which we need to change, i.e. the reformation of Islam. Yeah, so the pressure you see on the Muslims is becoming uh, even more intense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's why it's important that as Muslims that we're prepared, yeah. you know, uh, by understanding our deen, that we're prepared to know how to counter these these arguments, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that was shown from these uh, Christchurch attacks was that a lot of Muslims, I think Rush uh, did uh, touch upon it, but mm. a lot of non-Muslims were showing uh, that, uh, you know, interest in Islam, so you know, a lot of the women too. were wearing headscarves and yeah. a lot of Muslims were... Uh, sending messages showing that 300 people became Muslim, etc. Yeah, yeah. So, would you say that actually there's some good that's come out of this, or would you look at this in a different way? I, I think the first thing we need to do is uh, make a distinction, yeah. right? So, um, your local neighbour coming and giving you flowers, or coming to the mosque and giving flowers, 
come on, that that's a sincere kind of act of humanity, if you want to call it. You, I, I couldn't sit here and say all those local people who, who showed solidarity, seeing the graphic images and the, or the way the media highlighted it, and they genuinely felt like, oh, we just want to show that the Muslims are welcome here. That's fine. I mean, that's fine. We shouldn't really kind of speak negatively about that. However, yeah. um, there's something more broader that happened than that. It wasn't just local people. Governments started doing things. So Interesting. Yeah. I could give you some examples where um, they did the live Adhan in many public places. So Trafalgar yeah. Square in New Zealand, uh, they, they did the Quran recitation. They did this, right? Um, um, the Prime Minister herself, Jacinda Ardern, they, she wore the... Uh, head, head, head squad, covering, yeah. yeah. Um, she did this. They, um, she entered the mosque and kind of showed all of this kind of solidarity. Um, the UAE government, they took the um, Burj Khalifa, the, the yeah. tallest building in Dubai. Uh, they they plastered that with the image of Jacinda Ardern wearing the hijab. So for me, you have to take these activities separated from those neighbors and those local communities who genuinely. Subhanallah, this key point. You have to, to you have to distinguish distinguish the two, right? But when it comes to the governments who did this and the mm-hmm. leaders who did this, um, we have to recognise that this is not, you know, fine, they did it, right? But at the same time, you have to ask, what do the governments do elsewhere? We spent, mm-hmm. You touched on it, mm-hmm. that Jacinda Ardern was uh, part of the um, anti-immigration standpoint at mm-hmm. one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, she... Um, so what does this do? This uh, so she that, was actually showing she, she was anti immigration. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, she was. interesting. Um, I wonder how many people know that. Yeah, I know, and that's a lot of people don't don't know that. Um, her troops, as she signed off to be in Afghanistan in and Iraq mm. um, to help that war on terror. They call mm. it war on Islam, mm. even. Um, so you have to ask that where's the genuineness in this? Oh, no, no, this how can you do one thing on one hand and show solidarity, but at the same time be active in? Supporting or facilitating. So this is similar so. like uh, where you have, for example, Benjamin Netanyahu saying Ramadan Kareem yeah. to the Muslims and then bombing uh, yeah. the help, the, the you know, bombing Gaza, yeah. bombing and killing people in West Bank. Yeah. The same thing like uh, Barack Obama, yeah. you know, saying Ramadan Kareem and then the drones killing Muslims all yeah. over the place. Yeah. So exactly, this is no different. No, it's very similar. No, it's very similar. I would say there's a, probably a slight difference okay. in that w- for the leaders of nations, they have a local agenda that to keep the people in their countries, you know, satisfied that there's security there. And then at the same time, part of that security is their foreign, foreign policy as well. Yeah. So whilst there could have been some sincerity in some of her actions in what she did, because she saw that this is an attack on her nation, mm-hmm. an attack on innocent people. So she has to show that level of my, I want my country. And they to, were innocent. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to question yeah. sincerity, that's not for us to no. do. But okay. at the same time, what we should be questioning is if you're showing that degree of sincerity to Muslims there and you're highlighting Islam, as you should be doing because these are Muslims that were killed, mm-hmm. then show that level of sincerity to the Muslims that you're involved in wars at, across the globe. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, I wouldn't I, necessarily... I, 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 yeah, I, do you see I, what I, I mean? I think there is a difference. Yeah. In, like, Especially in Netanyahu. Yes, yeah. I, outright comparing her with Netanyahu. Perhaps. That's probably not fair. However, they, uh, you know, just I wasn't comparing her, but I'm saying in, in general, what you yeah. have is the examples yeah. you gave. And if you want to take on another level, where you mentioned that the, the Adhan is being read in Trafalgar Square, all these places, mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, that's good. But to think about it, they totally uh, abhor and they totally disagree. Yeah. With the content of the Adhan. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, 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 yeah. You think about it, yeah, you know, what the what the Adhan says or what yeah. the, the Quran is being yeah. said. So yeah. to them it's it's you know maybe a bit of PR, but the reality is is that yeah. do they accept is a token gesture yeah. from that level. Like yeah, you said, I think I, I think the important thing is making that distinction. I, I agree. I think because a normal person, you know, the normal normal individual, you know, yeah. they are you know, they seen this horrific thing yeah. and yeah. alhamdulillah there's goodness in everyone. Yeah. yeah, the goodness in Muslims, the goodness in non-Muslims, right? You know, yeah. uh, as from a human point of view, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to the, the governments and stuff, yeah. um, I think there's maybe some more than others. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe some more. I mean, like, for example, Trump, when he yeah. says these things, he's the same guy who said Islam hates us. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you know you can take that with a complete pinch of salt. Yeah. And maybe, Rashi, your point is fair with J- Jacinda. Yeah. 
yeah. that uh, you know maybe Trust. there's uh, this was even uh, traumatic for her oh, yeah, exactly. you know she must have watched this video yeah. and and they, this is in New Zealand this in her she's responsible yeah. for the security yeah. of her country can i just say one point on this point though? i think yeah, genuinely there, there must yeah there's a difference between Ham Jacinda and Trump for example however there's this point that i've been reflecting on that i think that's happened here okay. it's, it's kind of the society we live in right um, there's a, there's a famous quote that goes on to paraphrase that um, I think it's Socrates who said this quote. Yeah, but I don't, obviously I don't follow his philosophy. But okay. it's, a, it's a good quote. His quote is something like, um, strong minds yep. discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Okay. Weak okay. minds discuss people, right? Yeah. And, the, and whether this is part of politics or not, I don't know. But I think it can be applied to politics, yeah. right? You know, many of us, what we've done is started to focus on the individual yeah. leader, right? People. We're focusing on the person. We're fo- focusing on Jacinda, Obama, Trump, these kind of people, right? Yes. And the uh, the situation with America really highlights this, right? So when uh, when Trump came in power, everyone, every Muslim, everyone, not even even non-Muslims, were in uproar. Yes. This guy, he hates Islam. He's actively said he hates Islam. His uh, his his rhetoric is about hatred for Islam. But when Obama came in, at, at least from the start, Muslims were oh, all yeah. he's got middle Muslim name. He's he's he's, he's, he's black. undercover Muslim. He's undercover Muslim. So what what they did is they thought, oh, this is probably a guy that's a bit more with the Muslims, and yeah. even his rhetoric was very diplomatic. Yes. Not knowing what, what happened afterwards, he bombed more Muslims than any other kind of president. president right? Yes, that's right. Um, so what's happened is, you know, if we have kind of a bit of a weak thought process, what we do is we start to focus on the individual, the person, without recognizing that all of these people they represent the same idea, the ideology, which I said is a strong mind, the one who discusses ideas, right? Yep. So when we focus on the idea, what we recognize is that irrespective of the person, the idea they represent is the same. And that idea is secularism. That idea is mm. to separate religion, more specifically Islam, from life. So Islam has nothing to do with life's affairs, or only to do with your personal worships, right? And the final bit, just to kind of end my point, the final thing, there was some danger in what Jacinda said, right? So she quoted the hadith of Muhammad Sallam where he so says that the yeah. Muslim ummah is like one body when one part of the body hurts the whole ummah feels it what she added to that is we are with you we're all one however the hadith is about the ummah not humanity yeah. it's I about the specific ummah to that hadith. absolutely did, yeah. so we need to recognize the dangers of falling for this and not let the you know enemies of Islam those who really you know they, they don't like Islam to use our emotion against us I think then you know, um, with what you're saying, is and uh, Socrates. Uh, yeah. the, I'm not gonna uh, repeat what you, because I've yeah. I sort of already forgotten. But I got the gist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think what's important then is, as Muslims, we need to go uh, back to the the root of the the current issue. Yeah. And if we link it to people, or even if we link it to events, yeah. then what will happen is you know we'll just be reactionary to every event. Yeah. And if you think about it, you know, as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the best of examples is the Prophet Muhammad oh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, we need to take uh, the lessons and, and the teachings uh, of his life. And if we look at the issue of when he was in Mecca, you know, there was also a resistance between um, the Quraysh, the pagans, and Islam. And what we have to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and, and he mentions many times, that the battle between the truth and falsehood has been going on yeah. since the time of Iblis. Yeah. Um, and what has changed has been the face of falsehood. And as Muslims, we will see that whether it started from the uh, the Quraysh and then went on to the, the Persians and the Byzantiums and, and then later on to the, you know, to, to the Crusaders and the Mongols and etc, etc. Mm-hmm. Finally, up to the, the colonialists. Mm-hmm. Um, we see that one thing is for sure is that the battle between the right and the wrong, the haq and the batil, is going to be there until the Day of Judgment. Yeah. So with that in mind, I think what we should do as Muslims, we should have a framework that we view the events of the world through. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can see that does this apply to the reality of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us? Yeah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us clearly that, you know, that this is a battle mm-hmm. and this is ongoing uh, and that certain people, they want your uh, demise and your downfall, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. So I think if you look at this, what we can see is whether it's 
international or whether it's local uh, or whether it's in the West or in the Muslim lands, the 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 war is won, which is the war on Islam. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think if we disconnect the the events purely down to uh, something happening in the Muslim world or in the mm. in, in 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 the West, then what we're doing is we're disconnecting it from the overall yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the overall battle. Uh, which is to you know to defeat Islam and to uh, promote secularism, like you said. Yeah. You know these people they have their secular views. Now it may well be that Jacinda, you know, she has these feelings. You know, but the point is she's one individual. Yeah. She uh, she is going to leave at some stage, and someone is going to replace her. You know, and the uh, system remains. And the, but the system yeah, remains. Absolutely. You know, yes, right. What I would also say, you know, you could bring the example of the Quraysh. Actually, it's sometimes a good idea, or it's a lot of times a good yeah. idea to look at the example of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Especially because you know nowadays geopolitics is very complicated. There's so much going on. Mm-hmm. But actually, when you look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and especially in Mecca, it's almost like a magnifying glass looking at the situation. But actually, the situation is quite similar. Yeah. At the time when the first revelation came, when the revelation came by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quraysh, they hated that message because the reason they hated it, and this was before any of the rules of Islam had been revealed. So it wasn't they hated it because Islam was barbaric or it had these rules that it was going to yeah. cut people's hands and off laws. and all of these and laws. So those were, were there, yet they still hated it. Why did they hate it? They hated it because something had arrived which gave sovereignty to someone other than them. Yeah, before the sovereignty was with them, yeah. they could remain the policy makers. Yeah. They could remain the so-called equivalent of the capitalists today. Yeah. They could remain the people who hoard all the wealth, yeah. who make all the rules, who suppress who they want to suppress. Exactly. If you then remove that magnifying glass and look at the situation now, yeah. it's the same. The people who really understand Islam at the top, the leaders, yeah. the elitists, the policy makers, they recognize that Islam brings something that can solve poverty, yeah. can solve the wealth distribution problem, can solve decadence in society, but yet they don't want that solved because if that gets solved, whose pocket Absolutely. Is, it affects, them. It affects yeah. them? It yeah. means if wealth distribution it is solved, the, the money goes out of their pocket to solve poverty. Yeah. They don't want that. In the yeah. same way, the Quraysh didn't want this system which took the people who were in power out of power mm-hmm. and this is and the people who rationally think about Islam and actually reason on it and the ones that truly know Islam yeah. they hate it because they know what it is yeah, but yeah. the common person do, don't really know what Islam is so that when they're given a version of it they're given a false version of it yeah. and what happens when they're given the false version they hate it but when they see some nice aspects of it they think oh the version we were told before yeah. that doesn't fit or the Muslim I've met next door doesn't fit the picture yeah, of the Muslim yeah. that was shown on the TV. Yeah. So this is where it clashes because at the and end some of the day, look into it. Some, and look some look into, into it. it and become Muslim. Yeah. So that's why when the Adhan happens in yeah. Trafalgar Square, say someone became Muslim yeah. or when the Quran is recited, someone yeah. became Muslim. We get com- Some Muslims get confused and go, oh, that must have been a good thing that they did that yeah. without connecting it back to the fact that Actually, are they really doing it for that? Yeah, They're not. Yeah. So, you, what I would say then, and uh, you know, we're getting close to the end as well, just to sort of bring it together. Yeah. I would actually say that the issue of Islamophobia. Would you? Would you? Do you think that it would be correct to say that the more that uh, the more closer the Ummah is getting to its understanding of what Islam is, the more closer it is getting to establishing. Uh, its system, which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. the more the revival uh, continues, that we see that the law, the more Islamophobia, certainly in the West, it increases. Mm. Because the, the threat of an alternative system yeah. is becoming more real. Yeah? yeah, Because like you said, the people in power, what, what, it always, what it boils down to really, it boils down to the capitalists and the Islam. Okay, mm-hmm. and and they are no different to the people in the the Quraysh because it's their interests at stake. Yeah. Okay, so what you can do is to make sure that 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 people will never accept this way of life, or mm-hmm. they will never actually rebel against you because they see the beauty of Islam. Is that what you do? Is you demonize this belief? Yeah. You demonize the people who carry this idea. Yeah. And in fact, what happens then 
is that yes, maybe their militaries are the front line in the Muslim lands, yeah. but these same ideas and, and these Islamophobic ideas are the, the front line domestically. Yeah, yeah definitely. You, you, you can't, can't, you can't separate. You can't separate. Uh, we live in a globalized world. Uh, to, to claim that those who do the attacks are not affected by what's happening in the wider exactly. world, yeah. that's a fallacy. It's affected. They, when they see their governments entering Muslim lands and giving reasons such as, oh, there's ISIS there or Al Qaeda there and we need to get rid of them and establish liberalism and democracy there. Uh, when you see centuries since 9-11, that this has been, not centuries, sorry, decades, mm. since 9-11 that's been happening where it's been really, the anti, up, they've upped the ante, yeah, then yeah. absolutely that's going to, you know, that's going to yeah. come through to what their, their own lands and they can, people are going to start to hate Muslims here. Absolutely that. And that's why I think we need, even though some may claim to, you know, some may turn around and say, Islamophobia is only a word. Why are you focusing on one word? Words have weight. You know, terminology has a lot of weight. And how using this language, the key thing, like I said right at the start, it absolves the governments. It yeah. absolves those who are doing the main battle. Those yeah, who are fighting the war on their behalf, it absolves them of, bl of blame. Yeah. And how dangerous is that? Yeah, when we right. start thinking the enemy is the one who is in his room somewhere, thinking about writing a manifesto on his own, yeah, if that right. becomes our enemy, have we we've really lost sight of what the actual problem is? And it's about conditioning, because I tell, I'll give you another example, is the issue to do with ISIS. The, or what I found, I, I, to be honest with you, what I found disturbing is when you had Muslims who were saying things like, you know, should we let Shamima Begum back in the country? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about yourself, you know? Yeah. And and the reality is, is that when the stuff in Baghuz was happening, yeah. when they say that on that, maybe close to the actual uh, event in Christchurch, mm -hmm. I think 3,000 people that they just yeah. sort of like uh, uh, killed in that one, when they actually finally took over the area. Yeah. And what I think where they condition people is the fact that as Muslims, not people, Muslims, yeah. Yeah. is that because you hear that there's a... There's a uh, there's an operation against ISIS. Yeah, it's ISIS stronghold. It's, it's ISIS yeah. stronghold, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To use that, oh, it's ISIS. You understand? You put it, you know, you sort of like dismiss it. You know, but the reality is, is that these are people, these are, A, they are Muslim, but secondly, yeah. you've got to understand that these are fighters, yeah. but the majority of the people are the fighters, the civilians. But these, but they don't differentiate between the civilian mm -hmm. and the fighter. Exactly. They don't. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that I think Muslims really need to uh, get wise yeah. because these are the sort of things where tomorrow they can easily because of the ideas you carry yeah, yeah. they can easily label you and put you in a certain category yeah. you know take your citizenship away as we saw yeah, that's yeah, happened yeah, yeah. you know purely not on what you've done not on the actions what or what you believe yeah, yeah. and I think that's something that's key and a, and a lesson that every Muslim needs to know and just an interesting point on the fact when they um, announce or report we've killed X amount of ISIS fighters. You know the fact is when they speak about numbers, anyone they consider a combatant to be anyone of a, a male, a male who is of able body age to fight in that area. So when they kill that person, even though he's a civilian, they will claim, oh, he's a combatant. Yeah, of course. So of course. you know all of this hide this all highlights as you said conditions. So because it's ISIS stronghold, it's okay. Collateral damage it doesn't matter. But are they, is blood there, Muslim blood, civilian blood there, not the same as those who were killed in Christchurch? The same. We shouldn't yeah. make the differentiation. They're still part of the Muslim ummah. And I think the important point is what you said before, is that here you've got state terrorism, yeah. and here you've got individual terrorism. Yeah, yeah. And what they want us to concentrate on is the, the individual, individual terrorism, yeah, exactly. and not the state terrorism. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something which is, which is key and something which they try to promote and also, yeah. just to a few points before we finish, is that, you know, uh, this is something I think which is being used for Muslims themselves to try to uh, deal with Muslims who have certain Islamic ideas. Yeah. But also, I think, when you link, when you mention Islamophobia, and what we see quite a lot, is you then, you get Muslims aligning themselves with other yeah. minority yeah, groups yeah, good, uh, good based because on... Because this is an issue of minorities. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the link about where in the West you see you're a minority. And in reality, it's quite selfish. Yeah. Because you're just bothered by yourself. 
if you were being harassed like this, yeah, yeah. well, life would be normal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think you know that's that's really important as well. But mm-hmm. Isha, we need to end soon. So any any final fi- final comments, brothers, to wrap I, things up? I've got a couple of comments just yeah, to that's quickly fine. make. Yeah. So no reason. on the there's one thing you know we talk about state kind of terrorism as you've just mentioned. What's happened is you know we've known from if you look at history of colonialism and what they've done in in te- you know all the lands and the wars and the bombings and the, all of the the spreading of that idea ideology we know that's been happening for a long time but i think you know one of the reasons that the reality locally has changed quite a bit over the last 15 20 years or 10 years or so is because of sh- social media yeah, yeah. so what that's given it a new dimension so what happens now is when the governments want to justify their wars and want to go into land they have to dehumanize a certain people Super yeah they easily dehumanize them but well, in the past they could do that and then go and have their wars yeah, yeah. but now that comes home to roost so mm-hmm. what happens is all of a sudden there's then people who go okay the government's told us this view of islam yeah. i now hate muslims so i'll go on my social media and if i find some news i'll get there so the people are creating fake news yeah in order to demonize Islam more. Yeah. So it's like a self-fulfilling it's prophecy. A multi- exactly. Yeah. exactly. So what happens? Governments are promoting it to yeah. for their wars because of their various reasons. They obviously can't be killing normal innocent exactly. people. Yeah, if they say, yeah. oh, we're going to go to shoot some innocent people or kill innocent people, the people won't yeah, justify that's, that's those true. wars. That's all true. of a sudden, social media has allowed all these echo chambers to be created. So these right-wing terrorists, yeah. they have their echo chambers, super, white supremacists. You yeah. saw it when you saw all the comments. Yeah, you know the, the comments that were made yeah. after that Christchurch yeah. video yeah. of disgusting people going, oh, I hope he goes to another mosque yeah. and does this. I hope he kills some more. Yeah. Why are those people? You know what? The reason those people are reacting in that way is they've been promoted a very specific version of Islam yeah. that makes them hate it. Yeah. And remember, we were comparing that. One of the greatest human beings of all time, Umar bin al-Khattab, he was ready to kill the Prophet because the environment was created for him to hate Muslims so much he wanted to destroy Islam by killing the Prophet himself. So if that can happen to one of the greatest human beings of all time, then it can happen to anyone. And then you see you get this state level attack on Islam, but then you get a localized level attack on Islam via social media and all of these things. So I think that's one aspect. And yeah. one very other quick point is a good example of seeing the hypocrisy of of foreign policy and of, of the West at large is to look at the example of Israel. Because what you see is like Muslims want Islam to be implemented. Muslims want Sharia to be implemented. Yet there is this state that goes against all of the values that the West Hold, you know, yeah. Israel is called having a Jewish, a Jewish state, yeah, one yeah. that is allowed to commit as many human right abuses as it likes, can do whatever it likes, is carrying out a lot of its plans in the Muslim lands. Yet nobody says a word yeah, against yeah. them. Yeah. Okay, they say a few words maybe, but no yeah. action is taken yeah. against yeah. them. That's a blatant hypocrisy, Full just to show yeah. that the the Israel itself. Is is part of the plan? Is yeah. that they've put that in, they've yeah, placed put them. that entity in yeah. the Muslim lands in order to propagate their way of life. Yeah, and definitely. otherwise, you can blatantly see the hypocrisy in that. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. and then even their very values, obviously, human rights goes out the window if someone's allowed to constantly abuse it. Mm-hmm. But even when you bring it back home, human rights say apparently say that um, you know things like not teaching homosexuality say in schools for example yeah. it's uh, supposed to be a human right for you to abide by your religion and the state not enforce their way on yours in other words allow you to practice your deen yet now that is changing because all of a sudden they want to teach lgbt in school and things and muslims aren't allowed to remove their children from that yeah. where does that fit in with their own human rights yeah. so you see this tolerance yeah. their tolerance their liberal tolerance is very very restricted is very narrow to the extent that how is that even liberalism yeah. if it can't tolerate another idea yeah. it can't so i think yes yeah, latent hypocrisies uh, just just to say brother rush you're, you're on fire at the moment <laughs> you're on fire so but you know time is running out so, and uh, i can already see another topic coming up inshallah mm-hmm. We'll for next time, we'll, for next time, inshallah, sure. 
But uh, JK, any any last uh, no, final not thoughts? Really. Just, but just on your point around the uh, one thing I missed actually, the danger of Islamophobia that you what happens is you start to see yourself as a minority. You know the point you made about Muslims being it's quite selfish because you start thinking about yourself here. Yeah, yeah, you um, do. Of course, but yeah. the other danger is you put yourself against with other minorities, and you know this word, even the word Islamophobia. Why is it that the same kind of terminology is used for homophobia? homophobia yeah? um, and there's any all these type of phobias, phobias yeah. are put into one part. So whenever there's any type of kind of hatred or um, they call it like hate crime, um, then we all have to kind of say about how why it's yeah. wrong, yeah. and it puts you on the same pedestal yeah. as everyone else. And Islam is not there to be put on the same level. But the thing is, is that it, it, if if a certain society arranges a uh, a, a march on against Islamophobia, yeah. and they maybe belong to the LGBT community, just yeah. say, yeah. Um, and then you know the week after they have a, a march, yeah. they're gonna expect the Muslims yeah. to join them yeah. because they're all minorities. Yeah, this and, is the danger. Uh, this it's, is yes, the danger. a big danger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a big danger. So inshallah, you know these discussions. You could speak about these things all night, yeah. but uh, you know uh, we only have a, a certain amount of time. So, inshallah, I don't want to repeat anything else because the brothers done a, a brilliant job. Uh, just to say that uh, this was our first podcast. And inshallah, make dua that uh, many more uh, will arrive. And, uh, you know, we'll have all the information on our website in regards to uh, where you can access the podcast from. Mm-hmm. But uh, from myself and from my uh, co-hosts, assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته.